Hello everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, subscribe, follow, comment, subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I want to thank everyone that does like, watch, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen, folks, there's a link to you down below. It has links to all of my social media platforms. Please go down there. Follow me across all my social media platforms and talk to me because I talk back. Also down there as well as links to all of my YouTube pages. Please go down there, subscribe to all my YouTube pages, and turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Now with that said and done and put to the side, I've come to talk to you folks today about Elijah Moore and Mike LaFleur engaged in a heated exchange, okay? This was something that we saw this season, right? There was a dust up for a second, and then it was kind of swept under the rug. But this came around the time when we saw Elijah Moore request a trade, and there were reports that he had gone off on uh, you know, the floor and the staff and was sent home. I'm sure y'all all remember that. Well, today we saw Rosenblatt, one of the beat, one of the Jets beat writers, come out with a report that really opened the door and really gave you a look at the situation as he, you know, detailed and laid it out. So, man, let's get into it. Listen, so we all know Michael Floor was let go this offseason, okay? He was allowed to explore other opportunities, so they say, right? Okay, so we moved on from him. Now, this New York Jets offense struggled mightily throughout the whole season. We all know that. The defense was really the strength of this football team. The offense was very up and down. There was a lot of issues, a lot of things going on. You look at the end of the season when we had chance after chance after chance to seal a playoff spot. We couldn't do it. Couldn't finish. Uh, and the offense was really bad down the stretch. And we played defenses that weren't that good. And we still couldn't take advantage of those things. Six game slides, six straight losses. We didn't score a touchdown in our last three games. The New York Jets went 31 possessions without a touchdown. It's really bad. Like really 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 bad we just couldn't get it done and at the end of the day the offense was you know the big achilles heel for the jets and so there was a lot of questions going into the offseason about mike lafleur and the jets came away this offseason with allowing mike lafleur to walk and now we're looking for an oc but this situation is giving a look at you know the dust up between elijah moore and mike lafleur during this season now, Rosenblatt talks about this, and he talks about how, according to you know his sources, players in the Jets' locker room believe that Mike LaFleur's system was needlessly complicated. <laughs> and one of the main players that thought it was needlessly complicated was Zach Wilson. Now, <laughs> this is... Uh, wouldn't be a shock to anybody, right? Because Zach Wilson was one of the guys that struggled in this scheme, you know, the most. And it was apparent, right? He just couldn't get it together. And he was really bad this season. Um, ended up playing against the Patriots first game. He was bad. The second Patriots game was awful. Then he made some comments as well um, after the second Patriots game about not owing the defense. They got him benched. Then he, you know, was sitting on the bench as Mike White did his thing. Then Mike White got hurt. He comes back. He gets benched again against the Jags. He was horrific, right? And in the report, Rosenblatt talks about how Mike LaFleur adjusted the scheme to Zach Wilson's strengths, what he does well, right? He tried to adjust the scheme to what he does well, and Zach Wilson still struggled within the scheme, even though it was softened particularly for him, he still struggled within the scheme. And as he's struggling, you see him get frustrated. And this again, if you, <laughs> as you read this report, it really lays out the road because even Sella talked about this to the media. Zach Wilson's lack of confidence. You also saw Zach Wilson. You saw Zach Wilson's lack of confidence as well in, in post-game uh, interviews. And he also talked about you know, his struggling, even that last Patriots game before he was benched, he literally said in front of them, I am tired of playing boring football. I want to go out there and make a play. And you could see the frustration in his face that he was just, he's frustrated. He's not getting it done in the scheme. He can't figure it out. And he just wants to go out there and play 
what he knows, which was like BYU football, right? Even though Mike LaFleur was trying his best with him, he just couldn't get it together. And so when you saw Zach Wilson struggling and being frustrated, you also saw other players along the offense getting frustrated. Garrett Wilson, we saw him visibly frustrated when Zach Wilson would miss him. But one of the guys that was you could clearly see was frustrated too was Elijah Moore. Now, Elijah Moore coming into this season was supposed to be the guy, man, we were all expecting him to light things up. And this season, he just, it wasn't working, right? It wasn't happening. There were games where he just wasn't getting many targets, if any targets at all. And one of those games were the Packers game where we won that game, but he didn't see any targets. And let me tell you something. Elijah Moore's frustrations about that Packer game and getting no targets were clearly evident, okay? So after that game, the frustrations of not getting any targets in week six against the Packers led to a blow up between him and Mike LaFleur in practice. Now we don't curse here on this channel, but according to reports, Elijah Moore came to Mike LaFleur, talked to him about his role within the offense, didn't like what was said, and he told Mike LaFleur, according to reports, he told him, F you, you suck. <laughs> that was what, you know, the reports are saying that he said to Michael Floor. But we heard about this, though. We heard that there was a blow up there. And then because of the blow up, they sent Elijah Moore home. Now, when Elijah Moore gets home, as we all know, Rich Samini had tweeted out about how, yes, it was great. The Jets won. That was wonderful. But it's crazy because Elijah Moore didn't get any targets. Well, Elijah Moore actually replied to that tweet with a very cryptic tweet himself. He literally said in the tweet, you know, that if I say what I want to say, I'll be the selfish guy. It's all good. We winning. That's what he said. And I remember that. And then after that, we heard the news that he was requesting a trade from the New York Jets. He wanted to get out of here. Frustrated with, and again, the report gives you an open door. Clearly he was frustrated with the with the with the lack of production within the scheme, he was frustrated with Zach Wilson, wasn't producing like, and I want to get out of here now. Even though the Jets at that time we were hot, we were winning, people were talking about us. He did he wanted to get up out of here, right? And again, as the season continued on, you even though you did not agree, I did not personally agree with the way that Elijah Moore carried that situation. You started to see, especially as Zach Wilson continues to struggle. You started to see why so many of his teammates on offense were frustrated with him, especially after some of the things that he was saying, right? Keep in mind, Denzel Mims had requested a trade as well earlier in the season, okay? So, eventually, they were able to kind of smooth that over and hug it out. But, you know, that really, this, this report from Rosenblatt really opened the door to really give us all more context on the situation and what actually happened there. It was crazy. It's crazy. Now, Jordan Schultz as well tried to double up and talk about, uh, double down and, and talk about Zach Wilson today as well in a report that was called erroneous by many of our beat reporters. Even Ian Rappaport uh, came out against it as well. Jordan Schultz was trying to say that Zach Wilson was often late to meetings, that he was messing around and he just wasn't serious. And that's why he struggled so much on the field. And a lot of people came out and completely knocked that down and said, listen, the production off the field, oh, the production on the field was not there, but he was 100% on time to all his meetings and he tried his best. He was just bad. So that was shut down by, by uh, that, that report by Jordan Schultz was shut down. But Rosenblatt did come out as well. He was speaking to other people in the media on a show and he talked about how LaFleur tried to simplify the scheme to the point where he just told Zach, listen, you got one read, you got two read, go through those reads. If neither one of those are there, just run. <laughs> Listen, you got two reads, read one, read two. If it's not there, just run. Which again would lead to the lack of production for Elijah Moore because they move Elijah Moore around in the slot. So if you're only going through two reads and that's it, you're probably not going to get the ball to Elijah Moore often, right? So... <sighs> That leads me to talk about this Jets offensive coordinator position. This next offensive coordinator that they bring in here has to be a guy that is going to be able to command respect from this locker room, 
that's going to be able to communicate the scheme efficiently and make it very easy for people to understand. And he's got to have a plan to fix Zach Wilson, okay? Now, I don't know what the Jets are going to do at quarterback. There's a lot of names from Carr to Lamar to some people want Aaron Rodgers. Okay, fine, whatever, right? Jimmy Garoppolo, there's a lot of names. But the Jets are talking about Zach Wilson eventually at some point being their guy. Or they want to coach him to figure out if he's ever going to be their guy. If Zach Wilson is ever going to be a starting quarterback for the New York Jets at any point, they have to fix these issues with him. And the next offensive coordinator has to find a way to take whatever they can of his skill set and make it pop within their offense. Whatever he does well. And he does, he does some things well. Launching the football down the field, rolling out, all that stuff. But they've also got to work on the things that he doesn't do well. His footwork, his mechanics, his timing, his, his ability to read. It's got to be fixed. It's got to be fixed. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on the next Jets offensive coordinator to get those things together. So, man, comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. How do you feel about this report by Rosenblatt? What are your thoughts about it? What are your thoughts about Mike LaFleur? Do you feel like he was scapegoated now that this report has come out as well? Comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. You folks have a good one. Peace.